sample problem three four okay so thus far what we've done in this uh, in this chapter is we've looked at free body diagrams we've looked at constraints we've looked at all those things and then once we've got our free body diagram then we look at our equations what are our equations of equilibrium some of the moments about a point should equal zero not six zero some of the forces in the x should equal zero some of the forces in the y so let's do an example determine the magnitude t of the tension in the supporting cable and the magnitude of the force on the pin at a for the jib crane a jib crane okay so this guy can move back and forth the beam a b is a standard 0.5 meter I-beam with a mass of 95 kilogram per meter of length. Okay, 0.5 meter, that's 5 meters long. Um, so just, just check that you uh, see these dimensions, you're familiar with the dimensions. Okay, all right, so we need to calculate the tension in this cable and the pin there. So this is a nice problem. Um, not very difficult. So what do we do? Well, number one, free body diagram. Free body diagram is the single most important step in solving mechanics problems. So we have a pin connection here. So what do we replace this with? We replace it with an AX and an AY because a pin connection can only resist motion in the X and Y. It can't resist any rotation. We replace this um, cable with a tension it pointing in that direction. right? Make sure you get the, the cable tension correct. Um, then of course we apply that force there. And then an important one is concerning the, the weight of the beam. So the first thing you do is you need to calculate the weight of the beam, which is, so it's 95 kilograms per meter. So how many meters is it? It's 5. So 95 times 5 gives us the total mass of the beam. And then we need to multiply it by G, right? Mg times 9.81. So Mg would give us then uh, 4.66 kilonewton. Now, the question is, and by the way, we'll only get into this in detail in Chapter 5, but the weight of the beam, okay, where does it act? We've now calculated the weight, but we need to identify or specify where it acts. And it acts through the center of mass, okay? So the center of mass for a uniform beam like this would just simply be in the geometrical center, Okay, but like I said in chapter 5, we will get into more detail of how to calculate the center of mass, center of gravity, centroids, things like that. But all you do is put it in, this, in the geometrical center here. So at 2.5 meters, that's where that would be, at 2.5. Okay, acting in, along that line of action. Okay, so now we've got our free body diagram. Okay, very good. So we're trying to find the force on the pin here so that we can design our pin. We're trying to find the force on the cable so that we can design our cable. All right. So the first step that they do here is they take moments about point A. Okay. Some of the moments about point A and they take counterclockwise as positive. Okay, so let's just stop here and let's look at this in a, in a critical way. Why would we take moments about point A and not moments about that point or that point or even that point? Which are all, it's fine, no problem. But why would we do that? What, what would your answer be? The reason we would do that is because if we take moments about that point there, we immediately eliminate two unknowns from our equation. And we only will have this unknown in our equation. If, however, we took moments about that point, 
we would eliminate this unknown, but then we would have two unknowns in this equation. So it's very helpful uh, when you're taking moments, try to choose a point uh, on, on your structure where you eliminate most of the unknowns and you are left with a single unknown because then it helps us. I'll go through this in, in a second. This equation then only has one unknown and we can immediately solve for one of the unknowns. Okay? Alright, so we're taking moments about A. Now we take counterclockwise as positive, clockwise as negative. So AX and AY don't cause moments about, about this point here. So they are not in the equation. Uh, let's look at this T. So the one way we can calculate the moment is by extending this and then calculating that perpendicular distance, which is pretty tricky. I mean, maybe you could do it. I think you probably could do it. But why not rather just use Varignon's theorem, principle of moments, uh, and break this guy up into x and y. So there's ty and there's tx. Okay, and ty T, or tx would be t cos 25. Okay, and there's the line of action. There's the line of action. And there would be the moment arm. So we, we're taking moments. So there is the T, Tx, which is T cos 25. And then the point 0.25. <clears throat> let, let's just put it this way. This is the F part, and that's the D part, the perpendicular distance. Okay, there's the D part. And what about, and it is going counterclockwise, so it's plus. And then this guy, Ty, there's its line of action, and there's the moment arm there. Okay? Now this moment arm is from there all the way to that point A, which is not quite 5 meters. It's 5 meters minus this point two, point one two. That's why the... So there's your, the, there's your force, and there's your distance, your perpendicular distance, D. 5 minus 0.12. And it's also going counterclockwise. Okay? Now, what's next? We've got these two forces here. So this force uh, of the 10 kilonewton will be um, 5 minus 1.5 would be that total distance. Minus 0.12 will be so we're looking for that distance there, right? So that'll be 5 minus 1.5 minus 0.12. That's your perpendicular distance because it's, it's acting down and there's my perpendicular distance. And it'll, be, and it'll be acting clockwise, so that's why there's a minus there. Then we've got this 4.66 kilonewton, which is acting at 2.5 of the beam halfway through uh, on the beam, but it's 2.5 minus that 0.12 equals, and then we set that equal to zero because the beam needs to be in equilibrium and we solve for T. There's one single unknown. Okay? So now we've solved for T. Now we need to solve for A, X, and A, Y. Now we use our other two equations. By the way, we had three unknowns. T, A, X, A, Y, and we have three equations. All right. So now AX. Okay, we take right as positive. So AX. Does that have a, an X component? No, no, yes. This uh, T cos 25. So we calculated T. 19.61 kilonewton. So it's acting in the negative direction. So here is our equation. We set it equal to zero. We solve for AX. And we similarly do the for AY. We have AY minus that, minus that, plus that. And we get, we solve for AY. Now, to get the magnitude, we use AX and AY. And we just use simple Py the Pythagorean theorem. And we calculate the magnitude of the pin connection. 
So now we've got the, the magnitude of the, the tension and we've got the magnitude of the pin, the force on the pin. So the basic idea is now that you've got this information, you can go and design, you can go and select your cable, you can select the type of pin that can withstand those kinds of forces. Okay? So I encourage you as well, go through this graphical solution um, to see another way of solving this.